Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing Beta 2 agonists for the treatment of asthma. Okay, so we're currently uh, just going to look at um, asthma, okay, so that we can understand why Beta 2 agonists are going to be an effective uh, immediate treatment and also prophylactic treatment against asthma, okay? Uh, so, um, we're just completing our discussion of the structure of the bronchial wall. Okay, so, um, really to understand uh, these interconnected discs of hyaline cartilage here, you need to see uh, them from a different angle. So we're looking at a cross section, basically. Really to understand this, you need to look at the bronchus from the side. So let's just draw a picture of the bronchus from the side. Okay, so let me bring this up. Right, so here is a tube, okay, so that's always a good starting point, okay, and basically we're now looking from the side rather than a cross section, okay, so the cartilage will be like this, okay, so you have this sort of interconnected meshwork of cartilage, so let me highlight the cartilage in green, okay, so this in green is hyaline cartilage, and where there isn't um, hyaline cartilage, you just have the submucosa straight away, so uh, you'll be able to understand, therefore, how if we took a cross-section through, you'd see portions that had hyaline cartilage, for instance, here, and then portions which didn't have, whoops, you can't see this, and portions where you didn't have hyaline cartilage here and here, which are analogous to here and here, basically. But this is how it works, you've sort of got this uh, interconnected meshwork of cartilage that does surround, in this sort of hit and miss way, uh, the submucosa of the bronchus. Okay, so that's the structure of a bronchus. So let's now um, begin our discussion of what asthma is. Okay, so asthma is a chronic condition where you get intermittent asthmatic attacks. Okay, so if you have asthma, then uh, you'll get occasionally asthmatic attacks, and depending on how persistent the asthmatic attacks are, um, will depend upon how rigorous treatment you are given. So, you know, if you're having asthmatic attacks uh, once every month or something, then that's a mild form of asthma, whereas you're, if you're having them on a daily basis, then that's a more severe form of asthma. Okay, so asthma is this chronic condition where you get these asthmatic attacks. Okay, now, there are two forms of asthma, okay? There is what's known as allergic asthma, okay? And this is where uh, your asthmatic attack is induced by exposure to a substance which you are allergic to. So, for instance, uh, pollen or house dust mite proteins, uh, these sort of things, uh, when you inhale them, can trigger an asthmatic attack because you're allergic to them, okay? On the other hand, there can also be what's known as non-allergic asthma, okay? Now, this is caused by um, differing things, so the asthmatic attacks in non-allergic asthma are triggered by things like cold air, Exercise. So I should write some of these down. So non-asthmatic, as non-allergic asthma uh, can be triggered by breathing in very cold air, or exercise, or breathing in environmental pollutants such as sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. Also, horrible chemicals in cigarette smoke can also trigger non-allergic asthma. Um, viral infection can trigger non-allergic asthma. So I'll add that one as well. Also, stress and anxiety uh, can also lead to uh, non-allergic asthmatic attacks, okay? Whereas allergic asthma, the sort of archetypal example would be breathing in pollen or the dust mite proteins. So, dust mites are tiny little animals or insects or amphipods or whatever that live um, on um, the dust, basically, which is dead cells, dead human cells, okay? Uh, so, dust mite proteins. Right, so, um, allergic asthma is the better understood of the two. We don't understand how things like stress and anxiety uh, can lead to uh, non-allergic asthmatic attacks, although we do, abri um, do believe that they can. Um, 
But allergic asthma is quite well understood, and allergic asthma can lead to non-allergic asthma, as I'll show you in a moment. So we'll start off with allergic asthma, and then uh, we will uh, see how it can propagate into non-allergic asthma, where, for instance, things like cold air and environmental pollutants and other noxious chemicals can trigger an asthmatic attack without uh, you needing to be re-exposed to the um, allergen. Okay, so what happens in allergic asthma? Well, initially, you will have a primary exposure to this allergen, okay? So, long, long ago, when you were just a toddler, potentially, you were exposed to the allergen for the first ever time, okay? Now, for some reason that we do not understand, you are unlucky, and your body initiates an adaptive immune response against this allergen. Okay, so we can imagine that it is pollen or something. So, you inhale the allergen for the first time and you initiate a type 1 uh, hypersensitivity reaction basically to it. Okay, so you're going to initiate an adaptive immune response against it. Now, you don't get an asthmatic attack the first time. Okay, initially what happens is you get an adaptive immune response to it and this is a humoral adaptive immune response, and it overall leads to the production of immunoglobulin E, which is a type of antibody that is against this allergen. So let me draw this immunoglobulin E. So remember, antibodies have a very distinctive structure, okay? They have um, these two heavy chains here that are joined together by disulfide bonds. And then off the heavy chains, you then have these light chains which are attached to the heavy chains by disulfide bonds. Now, there are five different types of immunoglobulin, five different types of antibody. There's IgA, IgE, IgD, IgM, IgD, uh, sorry, IgG, okay? Um, IgE is the type that's very, very important in uh, asthma. Okay, right. Now... What will happen is this IgE is going to get mounted on a receptor on the surface of the mast cells. So, when you are first exposed to the allergen, you will initiate an adaptive immune response against it. And if you want to know more about the adaptive immune response, if you watch my video on the pathology of asthma, we go through the adaptive immune response um, in full, basically. Uh, but for this, we will just abbreviate it. We'll just basically have, you know, adaptive immune response leads to the production of IgE, because we don't need to look at that in order to understand beta-2 agonists. Okay, so... We've produced this um, IgE that's against the allergen. Now what happens is that the IgE gets mounted on the receptor on the surface of these mast cells. So IgE is going to go up all over the body. We're going to produce it against this allergen and it will be in the blood everywhere. And it will go from the blood into the interstitial fluid and some of it might just end up on these mast cells here. Okay, so... Let me draw the mast cell now bigger. So this is a mast cell in the lamina propria of the bronchus. Okay, so the mast cells have a special receptor on their surface, okay, which I'll draw here. And this is what's known as the FC epsilon R1, okay, like so. So let's talk through the name of this. So FC here refers to the fragment crystallizable. So this means fragment crystallizable. Okay? And this refers to the portion of the um, antibody that uh, is fixed, basically. So there is a portion of an antibody that does not vary between different antibodies, and there is a portion that varies between different antibodies. So the portion which actually binds to an antigen that varies between different antibodies. However, the portion down here, this is fixed between different antibodies. Okay, so the fragment crystallizable refers to this fixed region of an antibody. Now, the fragment crystallizable epsilon refers to the fixed region of an immunoglobulin E antibody. So the different types of antibody, the five different types, will all have a slightly different uh, fragment crystallizables, okay? So even though uh, it's fixed as far as 
um, IgE is concerned, it's not fixed across the different types of antibodies. So there are five different types of antibody which will have different fragment crystallizables. But of course, of you know, you don't just make one type of IgE, you make a huge different types of IgE, and they'll all vary in their antigen binding region. They'll have a fixed fragment crystallizable, but the antigen uh, binding portion will vary. Okay, so we are talking about the fixed region for the uh, immunoglobulin E, and basically this will bind to this receptor on the surface of the mast cell, okay, and it will prime this uh, FC epsilon R1 receptor now uh, for, um, for the uh, beginning an asthmatic attack or an allergic asthmatic attack. Okay, so uh, the R1 then just refers to receptor type 1. So this is a receptor which will bind to the fixed region of IgE molecules. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.